What's up everybody, my name is Bryce, aka Dubs.Subs, and welcome back to another video, and happy Halloween to you! I hope you guys are excited, having a good Halloween, having a safe Halloween, and you know, actually, wearing all this, I don't really feel like I'm festive enough, so let's fix that right now. Ah, much better, much better, I like this. Now we're festive and ready to go, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the anime that you guys have to watch for Halloween, in my opinion. So, without further ado, let's get right into the video. So, as many as you all know, if you've seen my channel before, you know that I am not a huge fan of the horror genre. I found it very un uninteresting, stupid, a lot of forced plot points. I think a lot of the actions that the characters make throughout horror movies are very stupid and something that would never happen in a real-life scenario. But... I've slowly been coming over onto the horror side with certain kinds of manga, something like the Love and Creed of Sai Maki, you have other horror animes, like actual horror movies, like The Evil Dead I really liked, even though I found that to be kind of out there, especially for like an older movie, wasn't bad, but again, it comes with that whole like trope of them making really stupid decisions that are really annoying. You have stuff like that, and I'm still, again, more of a thriller fan, but this series right here pulled me in instantaneously. It was so cool how they took the spin on horror and added like suspense and this whole mystery around what's going really going on in the town. And this anime is called Higurashi or When They Cry. So this story follows my Bara and he is a new transfer student to the town of Hinamazara. Now the school that is there is a very small school and it's very much like maybe like a 1950 or just old style like 1800s kind of school where every single class is all in one room and there's just one teacher and all these classes are combined because he gets to make a new friend group with two people who are around his age and that is Mion and Reina and then two younger kids who are also in that kind of same classroom and that is Sada and also Rika. I didn't want to say her name wrong, so I make sure to check. I got it all pulled up so your boy don't make mistakes. So we get to follow my Bara, basically becoming friends with all his new classmates, Mion, Reina, Rika, and Sadako. Just, you know, bonding with them as a new transfer student would do. And during the later parts of the first episode, we get to notice that something is strange in the city. Something happened with a dam project that happened in the past and for some reason it was going to basically just cover the entire town and just use that as a dam and flood it so nobody could live there anymore. So what ends up happening is after it eventually ends up getting canceled there's this thing called the Oyashiro Sama's curse that seems to be happening every year around the cotton picking festival which is basically as we are told in the first episode is basically they worship futons and like all the cotton that is being made like in the god of that but there's something a bit strange about that too and there's a lot more that actually goes in the cotton picking festival which you find out later in the actual anime but what we get to see is that people are mysteriously dying during this time we had the or original dam supporters they died mysteriously by falling off a like outlook uh, over like a waterfall both the parents die and that ends up being somebody else's thing i actually i don't want to say that because of spoilers so i'm trying not to spoil this for you guys but just so you know i've seen up to episode 12 so far so about halfway through the first season so i'm gonna try my best not to spoil anything for you guys just so you can experience the same like well of excitement and craziness that i'm going through but there's gonna be some spoilers throughout this just so you guys know up to episode 12. we also get to see that there are other damn supporters each year like for the past five years there are people that have gone missing a boy named satoshi has also gone missing and he seems to be a transfer student that was there before my bar my bar came to the school which is an interesting part that gets more delved into later as i'm saying but what we get to see is the characters are acting very strange, specifically within the first arc, and I'll get more into like what I mean by these arcs, but the first arc, Mion and Reyna seem to be acting very strange. There are times when, for some reason, they just have like different eyes and their entire personality changes, and it's very unsettling and unnerving, and the like visuals for a movie, uh, not a movie, an anime in 2006 is kind of insane. I really enjoyed the visuals for this, and it really has that style of that, like, early 2000s anime, and I'm not usually a huge fan of that, but it works really well for this, and the huge contrast between the characters of how, like, they're in this, like, weird, suspended, like, crazy state, and then their normal 
state when you're kind of juggling is this really them what's really going on it really pulls you in and i know a lot of horror anime or horror anime or just horror in general it really pulls in on that mystery aspect of like what's really going on but the way this one is done is just really compelling in how they do it and just the way the story is constructed and the weird arc way of how like you don't know what's happening with the characters after my bar ends up again i'm going to spoil up to like the first this happens in like the first four episodes so it's not like too major but what happens is right Re reyna ends up going crazier and crazier and you get to see like something like it's weirder and weirder inside her until eventually she snaps and ends up killing my bar within the first arc now what happens is when you go to the next episode you're thinking okay is this like over like is there going to be a new set of cast or a new set of characters but for some reason, all the characters are the same, and it goes back in time to before. And now with this next arc, it seems to be someone else is slowly going insane and slowly acting differently. And we get to learn about more about Oshirasama's Oshira curse. There are so many different, like, intricate parts of the story that are getting the way they're told. It's almost Boogie Pop-ish, because in Boogie Pop, the entire story was told out of order, but this one isn't really told out of order. It's like the same story, but different loops, but you're learning different information each time you go through the loop. And I don't know if the loop is like, they're actually going back in time, because throughout the story, you get to see that Maibara actually retains some information from before, and you get to see this within like the third arc. It specifically gets addressed, where he says something about Mion, that was found out in the previous arc and she goes how did you know that i never told you and then it never really gets explained and you're like oh what what so the way they actually like pull all the actual different arcs together and make it seem like there's all interconnecting somehow is really entertaining i really am interested to where this mystery is going to go and how they're actually going to solve this entire thing because i want to know what's going on with oishiro sama's curse is it true are the characters just insane is there something inside them that's making them do this or like what is really going on in the town of hinamazara is a very interesting and a very cool way of pulling you in and all this so like i was saying with the visuals i think they're very very good they're very spot on the way the characters change especially when they finally snap and you get to hear like they're like they're laughing and all that other stuff in the voice acting on this is so good i'm usually not a like i don't pay a lot of attention to the sub voice acting because i am watching this and sub i checked it out in dub and some people told me it was bad but i i don't know i maybe i'm just too forgiving for dubbed cast stuff and maybe i'm just too open to trying it and being okay with it but i didn't think it was too bad i don't think it was anything amazing the sub is definitely superior i totally give that like hats off to the sub it's much better in the voice acting than the dub is but i didn't find it too bad i thought it was okay it was like a mid voice acting it was nothing special but nothing like crazy bad so we the voice acting itself is so good for the sub like the way these characters snap and the way you can hear like the inflections in your voice obviously you can't understand what they're saying besides what you're reading but the way the tone gives off the way the visuals match with it is just so good and with the score that's going on in the background the musical score in this show is so good it's so unsettling the music score itself like it can feel it in my body when i watch this it really like just pulls me in and just makes this story feel like i'm experiencing it like i'm my, like i'm my bar looking at like my, my friend that i didn't expect to be this insane and this crazy and this like the whole horror aspect of how brutal some of the scenes can get towards the end and like other things that go on with it is just so disturbing and crazy and especially with how all these like climax comes to the ends of all the arcs it's so insanely good it really pulled me in i really really enjoy it and also you get the fun part of trying to take bets on who you really think is going to kill my bar in each episode or each arc because apparently that's really a thing it's really a lot like you're going out to a gambling ring step up folks one and all take your bets today who will kill the main character who will kill my bar we have five to one odds on reyna this time will it be satiko maybe rika or maybe mion if you want to get a little crazy you can even go for the twin shion who knows who's next who will kill her who will survive take your bets one and all if we're gonna have to go for downsides in the series, I would say the greatest downside to it is the looping itself, is when he dies, it starts over. At the same time, as cool as it is, it's very confusing and hasn't been explained at all, and I don't really know how the old, whole inner workings happen. Like, it doesn't explain if it's like a time loop thing, if you're stuck in time, if it's like the curse is that it loops back until you break the curse. It's just like, that's all theories of me, I have no idea, and it probably will get explained later on, but I do not know how it works and i wish it would get explained a little bit better 
and I want to know more about this mystery. Obviously, it's unfolding nice, and I believe the pace isn't, like, in my opinion, the pace isn't too bad, but a little slow for me. I'd like to learn more than I have right now. There's a lot that I know and a lot of crazy things that I learned about the characters themselves, but the curse itself has really remained unexplained for the most part, but we have learned a lot in that last arc about, well, in the, where I'm at for the last arc, about what the curse is, how the origins of the curse started, and what is really within the town of Hinamazara, with what's within the people, which is a very interesting, nice turn, turn of events that's going on, to lead to maybe something a little bit more supernatural, or maybe it is just the characters and all in the mind, because you have doubters and you have believers, which I think is really interesting, and how this works, because you have people who don't believe in it, and have their own theories of how this is going on, and then you have people who definitely believe in it, and have their own, like, way of mind process, how this is going on, and I don't really also understand how all the characters around my bar are really pulled into it, besides being, like, for shock value, or just creepiness, it's really not been explained why they are affected to be as crazy as they are and why they have the curse with them besides the exception of Mion, and i'm not going to tell you guys why i see her with that kind of a why she's the only one that makes sense for it but everybody else really doesn't make sense besides Mion and maybe rika if you want to stretch it out and try, maybe try to like stretch a connection to why rika would also be involved but she also really hasn't any hasn't done anything to be crazy reyna makes no sense besides there's been like a hint that she was she used to be in the town of Hinamazara. She transferred out, then she came back. And she has this weird, interesting past of something she did at a school, which, again, I don't want to say for you guys for spoilers, but it's very confusing and trying to tie all the points, and I'm still in the process of doing that. And that's the fun of the show, but it's also kind of the pullback of the show because I want to know what's going on. I want to understand it. But I also have to go through the mindset myself and the process and thinking through everything and connecting the dots and being a detective myself, which is... Also a detriment in the fun of the show because I want to know, but I can't know unless I do the work to do it, And but I want to do the work. So it's a bit like, it's a bit of an oxymoron, but it's a blessing and a curse at the same time is the best way I can describe it. But anyway, guys, I do hope you enjoyed this video. I definitely recommend you guys to watch Higurashi when they cry. This is on High Dive if you're trying to find it legally. I have no idea where it is legally because, ah, uh, to be honest, I don't do, I don't look out, I don't have illegal sources. I usually watch things officially. But anyway, guys, I do hope you enjoy this video. I hope you all have a happy Spooktober. Happy, had a ha happy Spooktober. Have a happy Halloween. And as always.